Through the 1800s and 1900s, railroads were key. The best way to transport large quantities were on the rails and with the iron horses that rode on them. And in no place was this truer than Richmond City. Behind me is the northern portal to the Churchill Tunnel. And behind this brick wall sleeps a train. But why is it there? And why the brick wall? The Churchill Tunnel has been marred with a tragic past. The Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, or the c &O Railroad, began construction of it in the early 1870s. During its construction, the tunnel would collapse several times, resulting in the fatalities of at least nine men. Why did it collapse so many times? It wasn't due to poor construction. The land in this area is comprised of blue marl clay, shrink swell soil. Essentially, when this stuff gets wet, and as you can hear, it's very wet, it becomes highly unstable. Despite all of these constant setbacks, the CNO Railroad decided to continue construction of the Churchill Tunnel. And in 1873, when this tunnel was finally done, it was one of the longest in the United States at the time, at 4,000 feet long. But even after construction had wrapped, this tunnel remained troublesome for the company. In 1888, the CNO Railroad bought the Allegheny and Richmond Railroad, and in 1889, these two companies merged. From there, they began construction on a replacement for the Churchill Tunnel. These would be the Peninsula and Ravana trestles. When they were finally completed in 1901 and combined, they created the longest train viaduct in the United States at three miles long, a record that still stands today. As for the Churchill Tunnel, it was left to decay. For 20 years it sat here abandoned, until in 1925 it was decided by the CNO Railroad to renovate it in an effort to bring in more trains into and through Richmond. This would prove to be a horrible mistake. On October 2nd, 1925, Locomotive 231 was wheeled in through this entrance here, along with 10 flatbed cars. At 3.20 in the afternoon, bricks began to fall from the roof of the tunnel, and the rest of the tunnel began to collapse. Many men were struck in the darkness, trying to find their way out. It was reported that men had pulled out their knives, swiping at anything that came near them as they stumbled panicking in the darkness to try to find the exit. Fortunately, most of the men in the tunnel were able to escape. One of these men was Ben Mosby. He had been Locomotive 231's fireman. When the tunnel collapsed onto the train, it caused the train's boiler to explode. Mr. Mosby was next to it when this happened. He stumbled out of the tunnel in shock, skin hanging off of his body and his teeth shattered. Whenever anyone attempted to touch Mr. Mosby, he experienced immense pain Unfortunately, Mr. Mosby would pass away a few hours later in a hospital. But for the engineer, Thomas Mason, and at least two others, this tunnel would become their tomb. On October 10th, an effort was made to rescue the engineer's body. Any further rescue efforts were considered to be too dangerous. There was still a fear that the rest of the tunnel might collapse if any more efforts were made. In 1926, the tunnel, along with Locomotive 231 and the two lost men, were bricked up. On the stone was inscribed the year 1926, a reminder of the men who lost their lives renovating the tunnel. What has become of the tunnel since then? Well, as you can see, it's still here, sitting abandoned, a reminder of Mother Nature's power over man. Parts of the Churchill Tunnel still collapse from time to time, as evidenced by dips in the road, and unfortunately, in 1962, the tunnel claimed another victim along with a house. In more recent times, the idea of recovering the train has been put on the table, but was ultimately denied due to the long-standing fears of further collapse. And the vampire? 
that's a whole other story. What are you doing? 